in the Hindu scriptures, it goes even crazier. You know, one of the famous favorite uh, Hindu, you could say, sagas is called the Ramayana, right? And they play it every year. It's, they made it a big long movie. People watch it in India. It's popular. Muslims watch it too. <laughs> Anyway, in it, uh, Rama, who is supposed to be God incarnate, God has become a man, they call him Avatar. Right? His wife gets captured by a demon god by the name of Rawan. Right? And Rawan runs off with her to Sri Lanka. And Rama can't find her, he's trying to, you know, finally figures out, okay, she's in Sri Lanka. And he has to get the help of uh, Hanuman, the monkey god, right? who builds a bridge from India over to Sri Lanka, you know, goes over there to get his wife back after years. You read this, it's total nonsense. In another story, in the Shiv Puran, uh, Lord Shiva, who's supposed to be the God of destruction. There's a story about how um, he had gone off and his wife, he left his wife uh, pregnant. She had a child and um, the child grew up. And when he came back, of course, he didn't know about the child. So he came back to go into his home, see his wife. And the child was a young man. He stopped him from coming in. The house because he was a strange man, you know. And this is Shiva, God. He's upset with him, so he chops off his head. And he goes inside and he sees his wife, the wife, whatever, and he says, You know, who is that person at the door stopping? He said, That was your son. Ah, oh, my son. <laughs> he went back out trying to find his head. Can't find his head. So he found a small elephant and he chopped off the head of the elephant, stuck it on the head of the body, right? So his boy's name is Ganesh. So now you have, this is their popular god, Ganesh, this elephant head god. He's got the body of a man and the head of an elephant. You'll see him all over there like this. Good fortune. Right? So you can imagine, I mean, this is when Allah says that he didn't put any kind of deviation in the scripture. It's from going either in terms of corruption of these other scriptures or into fantasy and just fable and complete idiocy. So the Quran, being one of the greatest blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, He calls us to praise Him, to thank Him for it in the beginning of the surah. Inshallah, uh, we'll continue with the second verse uh, in our next session, session number two of the tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf. So we'll stop here. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu ala ilaha ant.